Hello, welcome to Warnography. My name is Warren, and today we're going to talk about how I rigged this uh, 50 cal machine gun with the ammo belt and the ejection shells and rings for my film. I thought it'd be something that could be useful to others. I didn't find another tutorial like it, so who knows? Anyway, let's try it. So, this is the original file from the little video. Um, I'm not using this file for the tutorial for a number, couple of reasons. One is I can't remember where I bought this gun, so I can't give credit to s f about that. And also I think there's a lot of details that can get in the way of the tutorial. J and this rig, you can use it in any kind of way you want. It's just an, I you know, an idea for you to try. You can rig your own guns or uh, you know, fondue cannons, uh, baby bottle shooters, I mean, whatever you want. I just want to show what's going on here. And also, the second thing is this gun is enormous. It's like way out of scale. You can see the camera here. It looks teeny-weeny. That's the original size. So when I brought everything in, I had to scale it up really big. And when I used it in my film, I had to scale it way down. It was just a pain, and I didn't want to go through all of that m m just to make it simple. But anyway, what you can see is... Um, here we go. When the gun moves, the soldier moves. And there's the uh, there's the ammo belt wiggling and jiggling. We've got the recoil, the barrel is and here's the ejections of the oops. Looks like a party going on. That's a little that's a little uh, glitch, but it doesn't come out when you render it. Um, I can also show you here. This is the rotation. We're gonna add this. You see the soldier. Okay, you can't go crazy unless, you know, unless, why not go crazy? I mean, you know, look at, oh, crab walk, crab walk. Oh, boy. Incidentally, um, the soldier, he's from CG Trader, uh, PBR Soldier Pack or something like that. The gun, not sure, but I did texture it in substance. And this, of you may recognize the uh, building. Oops, I didn't even use that one. This background is from the kit bash. It was the free kit of, uh, gosh, battle damage, or I can't remember the name. Please forgive me, kit bash guys. Um, oh, and these barriers are from Mega Scans. So I believe, and the barrel too. And I just believe you use the tool. If you don't have any tools, you, you use what you got. And little by little, I got a subscription. I got a tools, some tools here and there, and I use them. And also, this soldier is rigged by Auto Rig Pro. It's a fantastic, fantastic time saver. Uh, especially, you know, if you have Adobe subscription, you bring in Mixamo animations, and you can add them to your characters. So, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. Okay, so now let's pop over to the actual file. You'll see the gun is made of different parts. There's a barrel, there's this sleeve thing, the main body, a grip, a support, the ammo box, a pillar, uh, ammo belt, and then the ejecta, which is in its own little group for the particle system. There's a shell, and there's the link by itself. Um, if I pick up the body, you'll see all these parts are parented to the body, and then uh, We'll go from there. So the first thing I did, we have a ground plane. Um, here's the support with its anchor point at the bottom, uh, and, or rotation, whatever. Um, I parent, I put an empty at the bottom of it. I parent the post to this main gun control empty, which allows you, uh-oh, what am I got? Oh, this silly thing, how's that get? G shift Z. So when you import, you append it to your your actual battle scene, you can put it however you like in a nice easy way. After that, I put this, this uh, sphere empty gun rotation. Bang. Okay, I put it at the top. Um, at the top of the string uh, circle of verts here, I put this gun rotation, and I parent the I parent the gun rotation to the body. And then I parent this support and the gun, and th therefore everything else, to that. Secondly, I lock the y-axis because that the gun doesn't actually rotate over the y-axis in this orientation, the global orientation, the y. After that, we have 
firing control. Firing control, oops, is what gives us the movement. Bam, 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 like that. Uh oh. And so if you look down here, if we start our simulation at frame 20, so I've got three keyframes. It goes back and forth, back and forth. Here, let me just disable a couple of things. Whoops, disable that. Okay, oh, wrong thing. There we go. So there's that. Um, and what we do, we go in the graph editor on the Y location and we add, oh, well, where did it all go? There we go. We add a cycles and <coughs> You want to control that using this before and after, because otherwise it'll be indefinite, I mean, uh, infinite. And there we go. You can set that for as many ro repetitions as you want. The gun at full cycl cyclic fire is about seven point bullets per second, uh, which is uh, you know enough to cut your grass and maybe the tree in the yard in half. <coughs> anyway, it's just for, you know, <sighs> For the fun of this simulation, you can adjust the rates of fire yourself. This distance is uh, is arbitrary. I just move it a little bit. What we do is then we add a limit distance uh, constraint to the barrel, and then as you can see, I've the influence. Of, I've dialed it in a little bit to to, what's, to what looks a little bit more like what I saw in the YouTube videos. I watched a lot of YouTube videos to see what's actually happening in the gun and I did the same thing on the main body and I doubt it e even less it's po 0.180 the influence you see that and now with that rolling permanently you can then start you can even oops oh that didn't like that did he oh because I don't have enough sh space in here anyway as you can see let's go to 100 I've already put some keyframes on that rotation okay <coughs> Now, let's hide the bullets a second and bring out the emitters. Bring out the emitter. Where are you guys? Okay, let's start with the Lynx emitter. And it's, it's um, particle system here. A link. We can even call that Lynx. A Lynx, Link, a Link. Whoops. Um, I put it to 60. For now this is going to depend on how long it's shooting, of course. Um, since it's shooting about 80 frames, starting at frame 20, ending at frame 100, I gave it a lifetime of 180, just so you know everything st stays. Uh, then it's hitting the ground as a collision object. We'll look at that in a second. So back to this particle system. Oh, and why is it in Imperial? Uh, usually I use metric because I'm a metric kind of guy, even though I'm an American. Uh, I was raised, born and raised in the UK, and I lived around the world, so metric is my friend too. And um, when I looked up the dimensions of the 50 caliber machine gun to create this model, it was all in feet, and I didn't feel like doing any math, so I set Blender to Imperial, and um, this is approximately real-world scale on this this model. Okay, so... In the normal velocity, I've got 1.17 feet per second, and and just mess around. I mean, you gotta find something that looks good, unless you want to go in and I don't know, go to the army base and ask them if you can do a bunch of measurements while they shoot their 50 cals, and they, they probably won't let you. So just you know, what looks good, that's what matters the most in uh, film and animation. Uh, well, it doesn't. Work. Let me take that back. When we're making a simulation, just for something simple like this, not important. Uh, to be totally, totally 100% accurate. Uh, okay, so object align on Z1 foot per second, the object velocity 0.2, uh, rotation as on global Y, and randomized 0.647, and I clicked the dynamic, I didn't do any physics, I chose the ejecta collection, use count, and I put shells to zero and links to one, and that's when we get, bang, we get this. Um, you know, Dial those in to suit your own taste. Now let's look at the shell emitter. 
Okay, it's almost the same set. Oh, and by the way, I'm putting the I've got these files, the the empty the uh, the blank gun and then the finished god dang it, the finished scene so that you can just, you know, examine it and take it, you know, do whatever you want. 30 minutes is way too long for a tutorial for this kind of thing. So you can you can look at these settings, you know, more up close and personal. So again, uh, the the number of it the settings are basically the same, except for I left it at 3.28 feet per second. I didn't change any of these. I left, I put object velocity 0.2, object Y, randomize 0.434, made dynamic. Ejecta, use count, shells 1, links 0. We get that. And it works pretty cool. Now we're going to look at the ammo belt. There we go. And let me Alt H and bring in the other stuff. I would say bring in the heavy gun, but you know, that is the heavy gun already. Okay, we got. Uh, here we go, bell curve. Okay, this ammo belt is simply. Oh. Hello. Oh, here we go. It's it's two bullets. It's two complete bullets with a link, and then an array popped on there, and then I snapped the cursor to the Bamo belt. I added a curve, Bezier curve. I went into edit. I did V uh, aligned. <coughs> um, what did I do? Well, there's a way of straightening out. Hold on, let's see. Belt curve. Edit all. You do V automatic, and then you come back and do V aligned, and it will straighten them out for you, and then put them back to in, a, in a way that you can use them. I forgot which tutorial I saw recently gave that super tip. So back to the belt curve, you go in the belt curve, and you select, you subdivide it so it's got three points, and each one of these vertex points, you control H, and you add hook to new object. I've already done it. Hook to new object, control H, hook to new object. Then I renamed those. Uh, this is belt anchor, this one is belt wiggle, and this is, uh, well, I don't know what did I call it, belt end. So now notice there, I've, I've done this so I can curve the ammo belt into the uh, ammo box, like so. And then I have animated a little bit on with a little bit of Z and X and a little bit of s very tiny bit of rotation because it you know if you ever look at the way the bullets go in it's it's like high speed and random um, and so here you don't this is just giving the illusion that it's eating up the bullets while the f while the shell the eject is coming out but actually it's just going left and right left and right um, and then for each each one of those uh, things with three F curves, you go ahead and put a cycle and adjust it so that it starts at your the desired frame rate. Boom. And then you go to the same. You do for the wiggle, you know, you, you want also, they're not just wiggling up there, but they're wiggling as they come out of the box. Just a little bit. A little bit of X and Z and a little bit of rotation. And then go back and put cycles on top of that. And there you go. And I think that's all I have to say. After that, the, this thing works uh, works lovely. It works lovely. Well, that's it, everybody. I think I've explained everything about how I put this together. Hopefully it can help you. Please download the Gumroad files, the uh, start and finished, if you want to check it out and try it out on your own projects. Maybe you can even make some improvements. And that's it. Next tutorial, I'm going to show how I attached the soldier and got him to appear as if he's controlling the gun when actually the gun is controlling him. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Hit the bell if you want to know when it comes out. I feel so shy saying goodbye. We spent has such an, a sweet time together. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys and girls. Wear a mask.